Air traffic accounts for 3% of global CO2 emissions and the proportion is rising. As more and more people fly, airlines are under pressure to pollute less. Scandinavian Airlines has come up with a new concept, green landings. As they prepare to land, pilots all but cut the engines, gliding onto the landing strip. Of course I could fly faster. So the, the, the gain with the green approach is to actually fly slower, especially on the descent, which means a long uh, time with idle. The, uh, the aircraft burns less fuel with no trust than with loss of trust. More than half an hour before landing, fuel consumption veers towards zero as the pilot decelerates. He constantly monitors incoming weather data, too much wind and he'll have to hit the throttle again. Green landings add 10 minutes to a two-hour flight, but by the time the landing strip is in sight, fuel consumption will have fallen by up to 10% compared with the traditional approach. The idea of greener flying techniques isn't new, but not so easy to implement. There has been a lot of talk about doing uh, more efficient approaches, but it has to be a technological shift, a methodological shift and some uh, shift of, uh, of management as well. And uh, we have managed to do it here on, in, uh, in Stockholm uh, and in Scandinavia. Green landings require close cooperation between airlines and airports who have to give the pilots technical support. It's the tower who decides how they can fly and how they, they can't fly. So of course there, it's, it's very much a give and take between the, the airline and the airport. It's quite applicable to, to most airports, I, I, would, I would think. It, it takes some knowledge and skills and stuff, but I think any other airport can learn that, actually. It will be worth it. SAS, only Europe's ninth biggest airline, hopes to save 10 million euros per year from green landings. For its big competitors, savings would be nothing short of sky-high.